Welcome to Kaleidoscope Toy and Miniature Australian Shepherds in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, sorry about the lighting, I'm doing this outside. I don't have a lot of time, but it's just an important topic I wanted to share with you. And it involves where and how to board your dog and how to prepare your dog for boarding. Now that it's summertime and we're into vacation season, everybody's got places to go and things to do. And a lot of times those things to do and places to go do not include the family dog. So if you have a breeder who will take care of your dog while you're gone, like I do, then you're golden. But a lot of my puppy adopters uh, live in other states and so they can't bring their dogs to vacation with me while they're having their vacation. So you need to look into your options well ahead of time for you to go on vacation for several reasons. Number one is if you're going to board with a boarding facility, they tend to book up very early for holidays and for prime times like in the summertime. Another reason is that you need to pick your facility very wisely because it can be an extremely traumatic experience for your dog or puppy to go from sleeping with you in the bed and being spoiled rotten and having everything they want on a silver platter and just being your baby darling to being stuck in a cage sleeping in their own pee which is basically what they're going to do if they're boarded at, say, a veterinarian's office or um, a lot of just stack them and, and uh, stack them up in cages type boarding facilities. And um, I'm not slamming all veterinarian boarding. Um, some of it's pretty good, but most of it's pretty awful in my experience. Um, veterinary hospitals are not dog boarding facilities. They warehouse dogs for you. Um, basically, <laughs> I have a young friend who, well now I worked in the in veterinary hospitals from coast to coast for many years and I've pretty much seen it all, but a young friend of mine, one of my puppy adopters uh, from 11 years ago, just got done working at a vet hospital for a few months and she said that basically what they did, she was working in the kennel area and at a very posh, well-known veterinary hospital in Raleigh and she said, um, you know, basically, the, the, they just basically keep the dogs alive. So, and that's kind of what it is. I mean, if you board your dog at the vet, it's going to stay in a cage. Uh, you might get lucky and your dog might be in a, in a kennel run, but it's probably going to be in a cage. And um, it's a very stressful environment. They generally don't get out for more than 10 or, if they're lucky, 10 minutes a day to go to the bathroom. And very often they're, laying in their own urine and feces and then they get uh, bathed and sent home right before you pick the dog up and that's just reality if you if you send blankets and beds and special treats and toys those stay in the bag that you brought and they're stacked up on a table and the dog never sees those because you have to look at it from the perspective of the staff they don't want to have your toys getting soiled they don't want your beds getting soiled uh, they don't want to have to launder all of that and you know, the dogs are kept uh, in a cage or a crate type of a situation. They, they, they have like stacked cages where the dogs can't come in contact with each other or see each other. They just see straight out the front and they're put in there and they're fed and watered. And you know, it's basically just keeping your dog safe and alive while you're gone. So there's, there's no perks to that. So a lot of people think that, oh, if I, if I board my dog with my vet, it's going to get all this extra attention and all this extra care. And basically, really, um, unless it's the type of veterinarian that has offers doggy daycare, has a fenced-in yard to take your dog out in, you know, multiple times a day and let it stretch its legs, it's probably not the optimal situation. So you want to look at the facility and say, <laughs> I couldn't believe some of the places I worked where people would drop off their dog and, you know, there's no fenced in yard. Um, there's no, I was a surgical technician. I wasn't working in the kennel, but, um, you know, there's no fenced in yard and they, they just have this big fantasy of what their dog is going to be doing while they're gone. It's like, no, your dog's going to be sitting in a cage. Okay. And a lot of them, they want to see where their dog is going to be. And then they would say, no, we don't have time. We can't take you back there. Well, they just don't want you to see how your dog is going to be living. So not to slam veterinarians, but veterinarians are animal hospitals. And unless, like I say, unless they offer doggy daycare, unless they have a, a nice big fenced yard and they're going to offer your dog a chance to get out and run and play and that kind of thing, don't leave your dog there. Um, and this is just my, my humble opinion. 
Um, find yourself a boarding facility. Maybe it's someone's home, a private facility. Maybe it's a friend that can take care of your dog. Maybe you get a pet sitter that comes in and stays at your house with your dog but um, be sure to do your homework and your research. And if you go to these places and ask if you can have a tour of it and they say no, forget it. Don't do it. Don't go back there. I mean, don't, 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 they don't want you to go back. They don't want you to go back into that back room and see how those dogs are stacked in cages. They just don't want you to see that. So be sh it's just like when you're shopping for a breeder, when you're shopping for boarding. Oh, and by the way, I have to mention my hat and my shirt. <laughs> These are gifts for, I tell you what, I have some of the most awesome puppy adopters. And um, both my shirt and my hat are gifts from two of my different, two different puppy adopters. So thank you very much. I absolutely love it when you bring me little special, uh, special surprises when you come to pick up your puppy. My, my puppy adopters are the best in the world. Thank you. But anyway, um, if they won't give you a tour of the facility and they won't show you what's going on back there, then scratch it off your list. So uh, you want to be able to see how the dogs are kept. Are they clean? Do they seem stressed? Are they being cared for? Does the staff seem knowledgeable? Do they seem friendly? Do they seem kind to animals? You know, if you get a funny, weird feeling off of the staff, you know, don't leave your dog there. So once you decide where your dog is going to stay, and the reality is if it's not staying at your house with a house sitter or it's not staying with a friend, in their home, the chances are very good that your dog is going to have to spend some time in a crate or in a kennel run. So, I mean, even my pups that come to stay with me, and even if they're in the house and whatnot, when I go to work, they have to be either in a crate or in a kennel run. So you wanna prepare your dog for that. And even if you don't use a crate on a regular basis, you know, I do start the puppies here on crates, uh, be sure that your dog spends a little bit of time in a crate occasionally and make it a nice positive experience because even if your dog goes to the vet um, for treatment and you drop it off for the day, it's going to be in a cage. So you want your dog to be comfortable with being caged, um, whether or not you use a, they call it a crate, it's a cage, <laughs> it's an animal cage. <laughs> Um, I don't know why crate sounds better than cage, but none of it's that great. Come up here, Blue. No, you can't get up her. Oh, she's too heavy for me to pick her up right now. Um, so pick out your facility and then start preparing your dog for that. And one good way to do that is to have your dog stay in a crate a certain amount of time each day, um, every day building up to when you're going to take the dog in and drop the dog off. Another good idea is if they do have doggy daycare there, um, drop your dog off for the day about, you know, once a week for the month building up to when you're going to have to leave your dog, especially if you're going to have to leave your dog for more than a couple of days. Let your dog get to know the staff, let your dog get to know the environment, and then it won't be completely strange to your dog when you do drop your dog off. Um, the other downside to boarding at some of these places is they're going to require you to have vaccinations that are unnecessary for your dog. Um, they'll give them a kennel cough vaccine the day they get there. That's not going to give your dog any protection um, or any of the other dogs protection while your dog's there because it takes a little while for that shot to build up. So if you're worried about kennel cough, um, you're going to want to get that vaccine maybe a month before you drop your dog off for boarding. So you're gonna to wanna to plan for that. Or you're going to have to find out what vaccinations they're going to require. And then you can do your homework and find you know, the best deal on vaccines. Um, here in North Carolina, we have a great vaccination clinic at Tractor Supply on Sunday afternoons. Um, way cheaper than taking your dog into the vet. And you know, as long as the um, vaccines, you've got a vaccine record or you know, in most states, you can give all of your own vaccines except for rabies. And as long as you have a vaccine uh, card, you know, you get yourself a vaccine form to fill out. Take the labels off of the vaccine vials that were given to your dog so that you can supply the vet with, with the vaccines that, that were given. But you have to be a little careful about that because um, vets, bread and butter is pretty much vaccines. And Sometimes they won't honor that, even though by law, the only vaccine required to be given by a veterinarian is rabies. They'll say, oh, we can't, we can't honor this vaccine that you gave because, you know, we want to sell you a vaccine. Um, so find a, a vet that isn't like that 
if you're boarding with a vet, but try not to board with a vet. You know, the veterinary hospital is where animals go that are sick and have, uh, you know, distemper and they have parvo and they're, you know, it's just a high stress, even if your dog's in a different area, they hear all the screaming and crying and uh, they, the smell of the sick dogs, the dying dogs, the dead dogs. That's, that's no place to board your dog in my humble opinion. But as I say, if they have a nice doggy daycare, they have a nice separate area for them. They have a good kennel, they'll take you on a tour, then go and check it out. But I guess the point of this video is think ahead. Don't wait until the day before you have to go somewhere and then start scrambling around and figure out where you're gonna warehouse your dog. Because then you're under a lot of stress, your dog is under a lot of stress, your dog is being dumped somewhere it's never been before, or maybe it's only been there to be jabbed by needles because you're leaving it at your vet. Um, or maybe it had surgery there or <laughs> whatever. So you wanna plan ahead, you wanna do your homework, you want to introduce your dog to that environment ahead of time so that it's a positive experience. You want to prepare your dog by getting it used to being in a crate. And um, you want to make sure your dog has the appropriate vaccines and dewormings well ahead of time. Because you drop your dog off in a stressful situation and then they take it in the back and they start shoving it with needles and shoving things down his throat. And you know, you have to look at things through the, the eyes of your dog. Wherever your dog is being boarded should be a very happy place for your dog. Ideally, number one, like what we do here is we have someone come to the house and take care of the animals. Someone that they know very, very well. And that's your very best option. Number two, best option is to leave your dog with a trusted family member or friend and then it's all downhill from there but, but you can find good places to leave your dog or you know your breeder like with me I, I do take care of um, dogs that were born here uh, but I know a lot of my puppy people are out of state but um, do try to find a place that specializes in entertaining your dog giving your dog a, you know an enriched environment while it's there and and doing that preparation ahead of time but at any way happy summer to all of my wonderful wonderful puppy adopters and subscribers i i have i this this last litter you know, all the puppies have gone home and it was just one fabulous person or family after the next that came to get my puppies and that it just makes me so very happy and i appreciate all of you so very much so hey don't forget to like subscribe uh, comment below about your boarding experiences or possibly if you have any questions about preparing your dog for boarding. Um, but I would like to know what your good and bad experiences have been so we can share those with others. Anyway, thanks again and we'll see you next video.